Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one because we are going to be testing out some new makeup. New to me, definitely not new in launch. I feel like my last few videos were very like structured, so I just kind of wanted to play with makeup and chat with you guys. I found out yesterday that I won't be able to work until at least July, so all my June weddings canceled, I guess. So that sucks. I've been really anxious the last few days. Not about that. Not really about anything in particular. I think just, you know, regular pandemic stress, you guys know. So yeah, I just wanted to do something a little more laid back today just to kind of take my mind off things, but also not feel too much stress. I have a hair in my face and I cannot find it. It's an eyelash. I have this one eyelash and it's literally poking like downwards and towards my eye. Should I curl them? Oh no, it came out. Okay, it must have been like half out. Anyway, so yeah, um, can't work. So I will continue to create fabulous content for you all. Yeah, I guess I don't really have that much else to say. So let's just get into what I have to try. Okay, so the first product I have to try is by Juvia's Place. I've never tried this brand before. I'm really excited. I got the Mauve's palette. I say mauve, do you say mauve or mauve? I feel like there's a Canadian way to say it, but I can't remember what it is. So yeah, this is what it looks like. Honestly, mm, I wish I picked a different palette. I do really like this like shifty duochrome shade though. I just feel like these two shades are like too similar to be in the same palette. Personally, that's just how I feel. I'm going to prime with my e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I'm gonna do a fairly simple look today, I think. I say that all the time and then I end up with like lime green eyeshadow. So what happened with that palette was I had originally asked for a different one. My godmother, she did some work down in the US. Uh, she was legally allowed to go down there because it was for work. She goes down to the States quite often for her job. She was in Missouri and then she went up to Pennsylvania and then she went down to Texas and then came home. So she went to Ulta Beauty and she was like, do you want anything? And I was like, yes, because we can't get Ulta products in Canada. So Ulta exclusives, it's like, can't even try to get those. Unless you have a friend where you can ship it to their address and then they'll ship it to you. But I don't wanna do that just for like things that I want. So I was like, yes, I do want things from Ulta. And I really wanted to try Juvia's Place eyeshadows. However, uh, the one that I wanted wasn't at the Ulta. I guess there's different products at like different locations, which is common in most stores. So it wasn't available in the Ulta that she went to so I just like picked a different palette but I picked it off FaceTime so I couldn't really see it. I was like yeah that mauve one looks nice I like purples and I do like it it is a pretty palette it's just it these two shades that are throwing me off. I don't think they should be so similar. Let's swatch them actually, because maybe they're not even similar and I'm just talking out of my ass. Yeah, they're too similar in my opinion. The top one is obviously quite a bit darker, but I feel like just one would have sufficed for a six pan palette. Anyways, it doesn't matter that much. I'm not quite sure what look I wanna do. I think I'm going to start out with this shade right here. Do they have names? No, they don't. So I'm gonna start out with this shade right here. It has like more pink to it. I don't know, I kinda like it. I'm drawn to these types of colors. I'm gonna keep it like rather simple for this look. And I'm just going to apply this to a tacky base just in the crease. That's a very pigmented color. I've heard great things about these eyeshadows but Juvia's Place isn't like readily available in Canada. Like you could definitely get your hands on it through like online retailers, but I'm very much an in-person shopper. So during this pandemic, I've had like zero desire. Well, I've had the desire to spend money, but like I like to see things in person and stores are closed. So, so I haven't really spent like a ton of money. Then I'm gonna go into this mid-toned mauve rose color. If you can hear the birds, I apologize. They're so loud, but it's kind of a nice sound. So I'm just gonna like place this color on, uh, I was gonna say on top, but it's kind of like just above that pinky purple shade we just applied. I'm very much an in-person shopper. I like to feel things, I like to see things in person, especially like clothes and stuff. First of all, I don't really buy clothes, period. I just so much rather buy makeup. Makeup's like one size fits all. I've always kind of struggled like with my weight throughout my adult years. So I just hate shopping. And then like if I get something online and it doesn't fit, then I have to like return it. I don't know. It just seems like a whole big mess. Also, um, I'm going to set the brow bone 
along with my Urban Decay Stay Naked. So unless you're going for like shades, like if, unless you're buying a foundation, I find that it's just so much easier to shop online for makeup because what you see is pretty much what you get. There's no trying it on. Again, unless it's like foundation. I do like to try foundation on, not try it on, but like I like to see it in store. That's a really pretty color. These are very blendable eyeshadows. Do they do eyeshadow singles? I'm not sure about that actually. I'd be interested in like maybe including them in my kit if I really like their formula. Who did I see do eyeshadow singles lately? Was it Jeffree Star? I don't know how I saw that because I don't follow any of his pages, but I do know that he launched eyeshadow singles, which like good for him. I don't know who's buying that anymore, but there's definitely some people. So I really like the blend of this. Let me just look up close. Wow, people weren't kidding when they said these eyeshadows are really nice and they're like really affordable. I don't know how much she paid for the makeup that she bought me because she said it was gonna be a birthday gift for me. So that was kind of nice. Also, I'm gonna take this purple right here. It's like a purple green shift. I think, yeah, you can see it right there. It's really pretty. It's a very strong shift too, which is kind of nice. You don't really see that in brands that aren't, I guess Juvia's Place is indie, but it's like more of a mainstream indie, you know? Oh. Wow, that was that was pigmented. How exciting. I really like that. That duochrome is very strong. Oh, I'm so excited. Wow, that's really pretty. Oh, I love the shift on that. But yeah, I don't know how much she paid for all of this, so I'll have to look it up online. Wow, that's so pretty. I love the sparkle. I feel like the shift is so intense too. I'm not even sure if you'll be able to see it on camera. I hate the way that sparkle like doesn't show up on camera the same way it does in person. And then I think what I'm actually gonna do is take my blending brush that I used with the first purple shade I put in the crease. I'm just gonna blend it out just so it's like not really harsh but I do like more of like a soft transition from shimmer to matte. Lately, I mean, I still love a good cut crease, don't get me wrong, but I don't know, I just been into this look more lately. That's so pretty, I love it. My dad just sent me a picture of my mom spraying down her plants and he said, gypsy moth lady, hard at work. She's like insane about those gypsy moth caterpillars. I, I mean, I don't know how she thinks she's gonna stop them, but she will. I'm just looking up the price for this Juvia's Place palette, 14 US dollars. That's not bad. Yeah, I feel like it looks totally different in the photo. So this is the online photo. It kind of looks like this top shade is just like a little more of like a warm brown. I thought it was gonna be more light. Definitely looks darker in person. But again, not the end of the world, especially because I didn't have to pay for it. I'm so grateful, I'm so excited. Um, and then I think I'm gonna take the darkest shade this one right here, just on like a small angled liner brush. I think this one's from Kylie back in the day when she sold eyeliner kits. If you have any other Juvia's Place recommendations, let me know please, because I would be interested in trying the brand more. I did hear that they were problematic. I don't know if that's accurate. I don't want to support somebody that's problematic, of course. I didn't really look into what was going on though, I'll be honest, because we couldn't get it in Canada anyway, so I didn't think that it mattered. Obviously it does because I now have my hands on one of their products and I just completely forgot about that until now. I'll have to do more research on it. If you guys know what they did and you want to share, please do let me know. I would appreciate that. But I'm just using the darkest shade as like a soft little liner moment. I don't really want to do like anything too crazy for liner. I really like that look. I think it's pretty. I'm going to pop off camera and do the other eye just because I feel like this video would be a million years long if I did it on camera as well. Yeah, and then I'll pop back on and we can continue our face and I can try out some new products with you. Okay, I am back. Sorry if my camera angle keeps changing. Uh, I got to get my dad to fix my my tripod because my camera keeps falling, but that'll be an issue for another time. For the rest of the face, I ended up using the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. And then to keep it consistent, I used the Born This Way Matte 24 Hour. And to prime, I used the Fourth Ray Strawberry Papaya Face Milk. I really like the face milks to prime the skin, just adds a little bit of moisture, especially for something like the Born This Way Matte that is really matte. Also, I haven't set my under eye area yet because I have a cream blush I want to try. And sometimes when I set this area, if I take it down too far, it gets weird. So, but I do have a powder bronzer I want to try. This is by Mented. Look how beautiful this box is. I'm so excited. It's a black owned brand, Mented Cosmetics. You can get them at Ulta. I'm not sure where you can get them in Canada, honestly. Their website might ship to Canada. I'm not sure. Ooh, made in Italy. That's fancy. Wow, this packaging is just so stunning. And I think I already got it dirty. Oh, I definitely did. 
good for me so this is what the packaging looks like i got the lightest shade which is the shade beach bum this is what it looks like honestly i wish it was a little bit lighter but that's okay i'm really excited to support their brand maybe they'll come out with new bronzer shades in the future jackie aina talks about their bronzers a lot and i love jackie i just love her so i definitely wanted to try them out especially because they're black owned and it's important to support black owned businesses and i find i definitely don't have as many black owned uh makeup products as i would like so that's why I also got the Juvia's Place palette because they are black owned as well. There are a couple other black owned brands I want to try. Uh, JD Glow is really good. They're black owned. Mm, there are some others. I can't remember them though. I have a list. I feel like I should make a video on that list. Okay, so I'm just picking up a little bit of the bronzer and I'm just going to apply it just kind of where my cheekbones are. Oh. Oh, it has pigmented and it's also dark. Hmm. I don't know if I like that color on me. That's unfortunate. Maybe once I get more of a tan, it'll be good. It just, it's not light enough. It's a little orange. Maybe because I was so heavy handed. I'm probably just used to the Fenty bronzers where you need like a lot of product. It's not the most pigmented bronzer. Oh, this is really orange. Mmm, disappointing. Like I'm, I'm barely touching it and it's still quite, Quite orange. We'll have to blend it out, obviously, but that's sad. I wish the tone was better. Mmm. I'm so excited for this product. It's okay though. Not everything's gonna work for you, you know? It's very orange on me though. Oh my goodness. I look like a contouring tutorial before they blend it out. It also could have something to do with the fact that I used it. <clears throat> Sorry. That I used it. I don't know where my voice just went. That I used it before adding any powders. Again, because I do have that, uh, cream blush I want to try. So I want to minimize how much powder I'm using on my face. Maybe if they add another light shade to their range, that would be fantastic. Formula seems nice though. Like it didn't go on patchy at all. Very pigmented. Uh, yeah. Very easy to blend out too, especially with my sponge. So I can really kind of uh, tone it down. I'm getting my baby hairs all over my foundation though. I wanted to try this bronzer because they have a good um, range of deep shades for uh, deeper skin tones. So I figured I could maybe use this for my kit and I still could. The thing with my makeup artist kit is that I like to have the same formula across the board. So when I do weddings, for example, I'm not thinking about, oh, this is a more pigmented product. I have to, you know, use a lighter hand. I find that that's like totally okay if you have the time, but oftentimes on people's wedding days, I don't have the time to really make that consideration, if that makes sense, because oftentimes you're doing like seven people's makeup. So I don't like to have to think about it too much. So I'd like to keep it consistent within the range, if that makes sense. Hopefully I'm making sense here. I don't know, it makes sense to me. Okay, so I'm gonna not do any more bronzer just because it is quite pigmented that might be a really nice summer shade for me even though I do wear a lot of SPF so I don't know how dark I'm gonna get in the summer probably not very I'm so disappointed in that color still the formula is very very nice very blendable it doesn't look like powder on the skin it looks very skin like hopefully this applies nicely on top this is the new color pop what are these cheek do serum blushes I had this for like a week and it kind of sat in my makeup bag I haven't used it so this kind of sat in my makeup bag because I did want to try it especially on camera and it separates into this disgusting looking goo. I don't really know. I'll put a picture right here so you guys can really see what was happening. I, I don't know what happened there. I'm totally understanding when it comes to separation of a product, but I just find that that was a very unappealing color. So uh, it's probably important that you shake this up really good before using it. But yeah, it really freaked me out. I'm still gonna test it though, cause it was brand new. So it shouldn't have gone bad, right? Guess we'll see. So I just squeezed a little bit out on the back of my hand. This is what it's looking like. As you can see, it's a fairly thin consistency. Should I apply it with a sponge. I feel like that's the safest bet for a first time use. I'm just kind of gonna dab it on the back of my hand. Not super pigmented. That makes sense though. It's a serum blush. Mmm. That's very glowy. That was a lot. See it blends out kind of like into nothing. I feel like it kind of dissolved my foundation underneath. I hate when blushes do that. Maybe if I use it with a brush. This could be more of a product since it is like a cheek do that is best um, on not a full face of makeup. That could very well be the case. I'll have to try it a couple of ways before I make a solid opinion. Very glowy though. It's very blendable. 
I had a very easy time kind of cleaning that up from around this area. So as you can see, it has that kind of wet glow. I just don't know if this was a good choice for a full coverage kind of vibe. You know what I'm saying? That being said, for a lower coverage day, I feel like this would be so beautiful. But that's okay, you gotta live and you learn, you know? I think that's really pretty though. I feel like for a no makeup makeup look, it's really nice. It did kind of eat at my foundation though, so I don't know how much I would recommend it, you know, for a full coverage glam. This cheek looks uh, really pigmented. Let's try and blend this out a little bit. I'm also gonna try and blend it a bit up here. I find that I have like often such a harsh line from my blush. It's not a good look. I've been trying to get better at blending it out, but then sometimes I feel like I blend it all away. Does anyone else have that problem? See, I kind of feel like I blended it all out, like it's all gone, which isn't the case, but now it's like too, mm, yeah, not for a full coverage glam, I don't think. It's not like I'm going anywhere, so I can just wash it off. And I actually don't have anything for highlighter, so I'm just going to use a powder highlight. So I'm gonna set my under eyes now with my Milani Make It Last powder that I'm trying to use up. I do like this. Not sure if I would repurchase it again. Well, maybe if I was in a pinch. It was nice, I will say that. I do enjoy it. I just really like this foundation for oily skin. I think it's really nice. Ugh, the blend on these eyeshadows is so, so pretty. I love it. And I'm also gonna make sure I kind of set this area because I'm gonna do a little bit of a nose contour. Then for highlighter, I'm just gonna use what's in front of me. This is my Tarte Amazonian Clay in the shade Exposed. And then I'm also gonna blend that out with a damp sponge. I really like how this is turning out. I'm going to just finish off the eyes off camera. I'm just gonna apply false lashes because I can't talk when I do that. And yeah, I'll be right back and we can finish up the look. Okay, so I've added some lashes. This is the completed look without lips. My hair, I look like I'm from Josie and the Pussycats or like the 90s or something because my hair just like spikes out today. So I put some lashes on off camera. I also ate a cupcake. It was my mother-in-law's birthday on Thursday and I made way too many. So I brought some home and I've been munching on them. The last thing that I got from Ulta, I'm really excited about. This is the KKW Beauty. Lip liner. This is in the shade Nude One. Uh, the reason I wanted to try this is because I really want like a good range for my makeup artist kit. I'm currently using ColourPop, but I find that with ColourPop, with a lot of use, this top part here like comes out of the pencil, like the actual product comes out of the packaging, I guess, which I don't know why I got KKW because they're both made by the same brand. I guess probably not anymore since they were bought by Cody. Does anyone know what's happening with that? Like is Kim K gonna rebrand? Cause I know I got the last one of this shade and my godmother said like her stand was completely wiped. And I know that Kylie Cosmetics is rebranding. So I don't know what's going on. I'm interested to find out. So maybe this wasn't the best purchase. I don't know, I guess we'll see. Cause I don't know what's gonna happen with KKW Beauty and like if they're gonna rebrand or what they're gonna do. I've also been trying out like some NYX pencils, but I don't like the colors that I keep purchasing. I got the shade Free Spirit. And I do like that these are like a wooden pencil. And then I also got the shade Tea and Cookies. First of all, this Tea and Cookies shade is way too pink. Like, like I thought it was gonna be a nudie pink. And then the shade Free Spirit, that's more of an orangey nude. It's way too orange and it kind of looks like I ate a can of Alphagetti when I was five years old. Like it gives that similar effect. Like it just looks too orangey around the mouth and it looks like it's like stained. So I don't like either of those shades and I'm having a hard time like picking a shade from NYX that I like. I don't mind the formula. I would want them in my kit. If you have a color recommendation that's a really nice color, let me know. Cause the two that I got, I'm like, Mm, no thanks. And I know that KKW liners are really popular, especially for the colors. So this is the shade Nude 01, and then I'll compare it to Free Spirit. You can see like just how orange the Free Spirit shade from NYX pulls. So this is the KKW uh, Nude 1 shade, and it's like a true nude. And then here is the Free Spirit by NYX. You can really see how orange it is in contrast. And this is definitely more the color I'm looking for. And I'm looking for like a range of them, like a range of nude nudes and reds and mobs and stuff like that but like I want a good shade range especially concentrated in the nude category. If you have any um, recommendations that would be greatly appreciated. Bonus points if it's like affordable because I'm gonna need like the entire range. Anyway I'm just going to apply this. Formula is really nice. It's very soft. Feels like ColourPop's formula honestly but this color 
I wonder if it's similar to BFF by ColourPop. And I wonder if the product falls out of the packaging over time. The thing is, I prefer not to go too expensive with lip liners because in my makeup artist kit, I do use them so frequently that I completely go through them. Like they're getting used oftentimes multiple times a day. So yeah, that's kind of my thought process behind picking a lip liner. I really liked the Morphe ones. They have great lip pencils, but they're not cruelty free anymore. What the hell? That's a really nice form. I'm just gonna clean it up because I got a little carried away and then I got this uh, lipstick from NYX again Because I'm trying to like shop around for my kit. I think I like the uh, Colourpop Lux lip creams Lux lip Lux the Lux lip packaging not the blotted ones But like just like the regular Lux lips. I think I like that better than these but this is the shade I got This is the shade brunch me and again, it's very orangey I don't know what's up with NYX pulling so orange. I don't wanna to put too much on because I don't wanna change the color too much. Yeah, it's just a little too warm for me, especially with this look. I kinda of wanted to go with something more neutral, but the formula seems nice. It's very pillowy, it's not uncomfortable. Maybe I just got like, not a bad shade, but just not what I was looking for. If you guys have any suggestions that are more cool toned, that would be awesome because I can't swatch them in store. I have no idea what they actually look like. I think I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of my personal Bite Beauty lipstick just to kind of tone down the orange and make it more like a true nude again there. That's more what I'm going for, I think. Okay, my friends, and this is the completed look. I actually really love how it turned out. I'm just gonna do a quick roundup of the products. Uh, Juvia's Place palette, I really like it. I would definitely be interested in trying more Juvia's Place shadows, especially this one. This one was definitely the standout of the palette. I just love it. And this one too. I really like that color. I thought the blend on the shadows was super nice and the price is obviously really good. So yeah. The Mented Bronzer, I was a little bit disappointed in just because it was a little bit orangey on me. I feel like it looks okay now that I've really buffed it out and maybe I should be doing that with like most bronzers. I just want to like show you in comparison to the Fenty one, which I really love the tone of. Yeah, it's super orange. Okay, so there's the minted one. And then I'm also gonna swatch the Charlotte Tilbury one that I've been using, which I think it personally is a little bit dark for me. It's also like nowhere near as pigmented. I don't know. I did really like the formula of the minted bronzer. I just, again, wish it had like a nice fair shade for gals like me. I understand it's a black owned brand, so they're gonna cater to black women first. So that's fine. Maybe they'll expand in the future. See, I just really don't like the Fenty Beauty formula. It's just so stiff. I love the formula of the minted bronzer. Like it was so incredibly soft and buttery. You just didn't need a lot like at all. This is the Fenty into sun that I love the tone of. This is the Charlotte Tilbury that I feel like is still a little bit too dark for me. And then this is the Mented Bronzer. As you can see, uh, the Mented one is significantly darker and I already thought the Charlotte Tilbury was too dark. And this one pulls a lot warmer. It has a lot more yellow and orange to it. So I'm not the biggest fan of that, except for the formula is really nice. I really jived with the formula. That being said, it's not a bad product. It's just not for me. Maybe I will gift that to somebody or maybe I will continue to test it out. Maybe it'll be nicer when I have a little more of a tan, which will hopefully be soon. The ColourPop Cheek Do, I actually really like. I really like the way it looks on my cheeks. I am very glowy. That's not all highlighter. That is also the serum blush. I think this would be best used on like a fresher face, maybe with the uh, Fenty skin tint. I gave mine away because it was just way too light. I think I'm gonna get a different color, but again, it's just, it's so tricky picking colors online. So hopefully once things open up, I can go in store and get actually color matched. But yeah, first impression, this is a really nice blush. Maybe not my favorite for like full coverage glam, but for anything from like light to medium, I would say it's really nice. The only that freaks me out is the separation. Let me know if that's happened to you with your cheek do. I'd be interested to know. Hopefully that's safe because it's on my face. So then we have the KKW lip liner. Really love this. The color is so pretty. She has such a nice nude range. Uh, yeah, would highly recommend this if you can still get your hands on it. Again, not sure what's happening with the brand. It's a really nice product. The NYX Professional Suede Matte Lipstick in the shade Brunch Me. Not my favorite color, but a super pretty form pretty formula? No. It's a good formula. It's really comfortable. It's definitely matte, but it does have like this soft pillowy feel. It's not super drying. It didn't emphasize any, you know, texture on my lips. And I do have some right now. I don't have my nails on. So I've been picking my lip again and I need to get my nails back on. So I do have some lip texture, but I feel like this didn't emphasize it at all, despite being a matte lipstick. What else did I try? I think that's it. Oh, one thing I did try, I didn't try it on camera, but I tried it off camera and I hated it. 
This is a product by Essence. It's like their lipstick. It's a semi-matte lipstick. I got the shade Charming. The color is nice, but I cannot stand the smell. It smells like really, you know, like artificial traditional lipstick smell, which normally wouldn't bug me, but then when I put it on, it's like all I could taste as well. I think I'm gonna get rid of this. Uh, it was only a couple dollars, so I don't feel so bad, but mm, it's a no from me. I just wanted to mention that in this video because honestly, I don't know like where else I would fit that into a video. So yeah, I think that is everything from me today. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. Please don't forget to subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's okay. I just really appreciate you being here. It helps out my channel so very much by you watching. So thank you. Please leave any video requests you may have in the comments down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.